Years ago, I used to walk up a hill and pass by this shrine of a building that had a different architect from the neighboring buildings. Years later, I discovered it was a Muslim mosque right in my own backyard. In a true sense, it's not that surprising being Las Vegas has a big capacity with many different houses of worship. I had always read about Islam in school, but this gave me the opportunity to step inside a unique spiritual place in my own neighborhood and experience its culture up and close. The first person I visited was the director of the mosque, Dr. Aslam Abdullah. Not on this location, but at another location. This mosque opened in 1978. We've had some consistency in the mosque over there. There are people who have always been there and who regularly visit this mosque. It's a great center for the community. It's a place where we can worship at peace and share a worship with each other. And a lot of times they do community events to help the community as well. I've been coming to this mosque since I could remember because I've lived here all my life. It's one of the most peaceful places I've ever been to in my entire life. There's hardly anything that goes on here. Um, if anything, it's outside of the mosque. It's really unique because you see a lot of people from different countries, a lot of ethnicities. It's not just limited to one race or one country or anything like that. It's nice to go and in, engage in conversations with people that you don't share a lot of um, culture with, let's say. It's a mix, it's a good mix. With Dr. Abdullah's consent, I toured. Before entering the prayer area, I noticed everyone was removing their shoes. Though I didn't know why, out of respect, I followed through. So any place where we worship God, we remove those things that we might associate with mundane things. Shoes, for instance, uh, you know, fall on a lot of dirt and a lot of things that may not be pure. So to take the shoes inside a prayer hall where you bow and you prostrate and you offer your prayers to God is something uh, that uh, we do not um, encourage and we do not uh, like to do. So it is for the purpose of maintaining the sanctity of the, of, the, of the place of worship that we do that. I sort of came at the right time to see the full function of the mosque, as they were in the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. Uh, for a month, and that is the ninth month of our lunar calendar, we do not eat from dawn to dusk, and we do not indulge in any kind of uh, activities the weak person we might be able to commit, like hurting others or cheating or shouting or being angry and all those kind of things. We try to control this. So it's a month primarily for us to develop a sense of discipline in our own personal life. It's also a month to develop a closer relationship with God because we spend most of the time in prayers. During Ramadan, you have iftar, which is the meal that we have after fasting for the whole day. They have iftar for everyone and they never waste that food. Whenever iftar is done, they keep the food and for sahur, so, which is that other meal that we have before fasting, they never turn anyone away. Because Eid is, yeah, we pray and everything, but it's meant more for everyone to get together and greet each other, your family or your friends that you haven't seen in a long time. And it's just an opportunity to do that. At certain points in my time there, I noticed that certain gatherings, there was a separation between males and females. I wasn't normally used to seeing this kind of divide. Yeah, when it's time for prayers, I mean, it, it's very inconvenient for women to stand in front of men and then, uh, you know, have those kind of postures like bowing and prostrating. You know, even within one's family, it is, uh, you maintain that kind of uh, distance. Uh, so, so I think it's for the purpose of modesty and for the purpose of decency that this segregation is done so that uh, people feel comfortable. There is no segregation in terms of you know, food eating is concerned. I mean, families can sit together, sometimes families sit together. And obviously if, if you know, they are not part of the families, then everyone would feel some sort of discomfort talking to someone who is a stranger. So I think it's for the purpose again of social etiquette. I tried my hardest to make people feel comfortable with a camera in their spiritual sanctuary not to get so up and close. I know throughout times there have been many negative generalizations and images on Islam as well as Muslims. You have to take it with a grain of salt and usually if, uh, if you're kind and with a sense of humor it passes. You know in other cities there's issues where um, 
people might protest against a mosque being built or something like that. Around here, no one really complains, so that's really a good sign that Americans are accepting. Like any other church or temple, it's just a building for people to go pray and like get closer to God or whatever. So I don't think a lot of people think it's a, it's a threat to them, especially here in Vegas. A lot of people mind their own business, really. They don't really uh, think of, of it badly. It's not only about the Muslim community, but every community suffers from the stereotypical images by others. They do not know about each other's culture. They do not know about each other's religions. And, and this kind of uh, anonymity creates some kind of fear. So this is how we, we view, uh, you know, the attitude of the people towards this community. In the U.S., of course. Of course, um, it's a different... Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, On July 28th, I came in amazement as I saw a whole community of Muslims gather at the mosque and a much greater amount than all the other nights I was there, celebrating in a shared hospitality and respect for each other, coming from all different ethnic backgrounds and culture, uniting as one people sharing the same spirituality and religion. It reminds me so much with my home country because you see people, you know, greeting each other and like, wishing each other happy Eid or whatever when they don't really know each other and then you see the little kids with their little outfits and and very nice dresses or whatever and to know that you know we're all one community we're all one person and we don't really differentiate between color or race or anything like that we don't really see a different representation for each other we're just one nation and that reminds me so much of home which I really like about that one mosque. Well, our mission is basically to help people understand what this faith is all about and to provide services to their own community. And that's just what they did. My days and nights inside the mosque interacting among the Muslims there gave me a higher understanding of a group of people that are a part of my community. Becoming more culturally competent through a true social experience. <laughs>